hello guys welcome back to my youtube channel if you're new here you're welcome if you're a returning subscriber thank you so much for returning back i do not take you guys for granted thank you so much indeed today is another brand new day and um today i'm going to be talking about a bit of a controversial topic people might agree with it and some might not so i'm going to be talking about that today and what is the topic for today today's topic will be talking about a boundaries needed in a relationship a boundaries needed does it help in relationship that is basically what we are going to be talking about today so if it's something you're interested in watching sit back relax and keep on watching okay so without further ado let's just dive right into the today's topic so what are boundaries basically boundaries are set rules like boundaries are set rules or principles that one set in a relationship in order to make the relationship go smoothly without any um let's say for instance before you want before you before you get into a relationship or before you get married while courting or while in a relationship you decide that you and your partner that you're going to abstain from sex like that is fornication so that's in itself is a boundary that you have set for yourself because you feel that um a very set a boundary that you don't want to um have sexual intimacy with your partner before marriage you want to do that when you are married so that is that is a set boundary already so boundaries are what couples agree on to keep like they want to attain like a certain standard of their relationship or they want to they are trying to avoid or they are trying to build their relationship in such a way that things will not come up into the relationship that will um be det and detrimental to their relationship that's basically what um boundaries are all about so there are different forms of boundaries there are boundaries that an individual can take on his own and there are boundaries that as a couple you will take like one that i just mentioned about um having sexual intimacy with your partner before marriage so that alone is a boundary that you have set for yourself so if that is basically the the, the boundary that you've set before marriage then fine and good there are also boundaries that couples make while in marriage so i will i'll mention that and i'll also mention some of the boundaries that people um in relationship kind of take even in marriage it also applies sometimes in marriage so i'm going to be listing those um things that probably we might be unaware of that are boundaries but basically yeah they are actually boundaries that we set in our relationship relationship sometimes we tend to um set boundaries for ourselves like if for instance you are in a relationship right and um you don't want your partner to feel insecure probably because of your past relationship maybe there is something still going on right and you're trying to make it in a way that your partner will not feel insecure and you're trying to make it a bit better for you guys you tend to set boundaries for yourself let's say i want to give a typical example for instance let's say you you have um let's say you had a baby mama and that is a if you don't know what baby mama is a baby mama is someone that gave give birth out of wedlock right so the person bears you a child so that's your baby mama right so you don't want and the child is in between the mother and um the new um, relationship he's having with the new person so sometimes there's usually a clash when there are no boundaries being set right so when you have set boundaries in that kind of situation it will go a long way to high nurse the relationship not for so that the other partner that you're with presently will not feel insecure you get it so you know definitely the the child will be in need of the mother and the mother the mother will also want to see his or her child so you guys will have to put boundaries especially if you guys are married right you have to put boundaries like okay um maybe during holidays you'll be going to see your mom or um you'll be coming to stay with your father whichever depending on which one works for you better so you have to look for ways to set boundaries in between um how do you guys communicate 
is it for your your wife if it is 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 it for your wife to be communicating with the baby mama or you be communicating with the baby mama and even if you're talking to your baby mama should it be when your wife is around or stuff like that for so that it will not be like um your wife your present wife is being an outsider or she doesn't know anything that's happening like she'll feel like she's been entangled in in a relationship that she doesn't know much about you get it so yeah that is it about that so my next point will also be that um, there are also relationships that people also said um, like um, they don't answer calls when they are home, mostly late at night. Some people even speak, go for for that to switch off their phones because they don't want to teach them by where they are home. You'll be bugging them with phone calls and all that. When they are home, they know they are home. Some people, that's, that's actually is a boundary that some people set. So let's say by nine o'clock you're not supposed to call me if it's not something very important like but this this in itself also is limited to some certain kind of people because let's say for instance if your husband or your wife is a medical doctor you don't expect her not to pick her calls in the night because it can be an emergency you get it or your husband is a pastor and stuff like that so those kind of situation the person will have to will not be able to keep that boundary of not picking calls at night. You get it? And there are also boundaries that people said like um they don't want to um they don't want to um be coming home coming home with their workloads. Whatever is supposed to be done at work should be done at work and things that are supposed to be done at home should be done at home. So they try to keep a bit of that balance like trying to make it possible for them not to have um a it's time for family and a time for work so when you are at work you know you are basically at work and when you are home you know you're fully at home not for you to be divided like in between and then you're working and all that that's the boundary that some people set for themselves so you can actually look into that if it's something that you think you can actually work with it so it's actually a good one but it also still applies to a certain kind of people because it's not everybody that can be able to keep that. You get it? So I kind of noted down some of the boundaries that people set in marriage, right? And um, I would like to just read them out and then we'll talk about it basically because I don't want to be rambling. I just want to give you the main points and then if it's something that you guys will be able to pick from it and set for yourself in your marriage or your home, then fine and good. And if it's something that can work for you guys, it's absolutely good. It also helps to build relationships. Okay. The first um, boundary some couples set for themselves is once an argument is done, they don't bring it up again. Right. So this kind of boundary people set for themselves is... Um, maybe if there was a heated argument in the relationship or an argument basically you're not supposed when you guys are done talking about that thing or probably when that 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 event has passed you're not supposed to bring back that event or bring back that talk or bring back that discussion again so that's what some people usually do but i don't for me i don't think that this will apply to everybody right if you're the type that maybe your partner excuse me your partner don't like to take some decisions when they are angry they like to come back home i mean go out and refresh themselves and then come back home feeling okay and then they can be able to talk about the issue some people feel better when they are when they have cleared their head and then come back to talk about that issue but while some will feel like oh we want to talk about it right now like right now so you have to know the kind of partner you have would um, the kind of partner you have will determine the kind of conversation if this type of boundary will apply to you. So you have to look inward, look at um, the kind of partner you have, then you guys will um, decide which one works best. And I also think that um, this particular boundary works for different kind of arguments. If it's an argument, like a little argument that people can settle like once and for all, then fine and good. You can like go ahead with it but if it's something that is um maybe a very big issue that might linger for a bit of while or a while then 
try and do that like just take your time and try to settle it take the process but don't let it to linger for that long like it should not be a situation but you guys cannot be even cannot be talking to each other because sometimes um arguments used to when when partners have arguments sometimes um couples used to have some kind of malice with each other and then you see that there's a gap of communication so if this will also help to bring if this boundary is being set this will help the couples to be in check you get it the couples will be in check for them to know that oh we actually decided not to um keep our 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 argument to linger for wrong so we have to find a way they mystify a way in which you guys can be able to talk about it and resolve the issue you get it all right so my next one is they don't correct one another in front of people. So some couples feel like when you guys are out, like you're up and about, you're with friends, you're with colleagues, your friends and colleagues, there are some certain things that you're not supposed to talk about. There are some people like that. And, and I think that it's actually good, but I feel like if this is going to be applied in the relationship, um, there are some there are some things that um, your partner might say in front of people. And when you sense that your partner is about to say something, you don't know how you're going to communicate to the person not to say that kind of thing in public. You know, there are some things that are not supposed to be said in public, right? So um, if your husband or your wife is not aware that you're going to to say something like say something that is detrimental to you or not like is not favorable to you and you know you guys have set this kind of boundary that you're not supposed to correct each other in public i feel like if there's a signal now you are giving like probably like eye contact signal you know how when you um i don't know if you would um experience that but when i was little right when i my mom or my I, my siblings and my mom would go out maybe we travel out um out to the village or something and my mom somebody offers to give us food and my mom doesn't want us to collect the food when you look at your mother like this there's one kind of eye i don't know how they really used to but to kind of figure like there's this eye when they look at you there's this particular eye that when they give you that signal you know that <laughs> If you take that food, if you take that food, <laughs> you you will shabulala. So don't even try it. So yeah. So um, this should also apply to relationships. This should also apply to marriages, so that it will help you guys to be able to stay in tune with the boundary you guys have set for yourself. I think that will go a long way. Basically, it's actually a good one. I also will so apply that in my own relationship and now i think we'll also have to even find a signal that will be will be um, favorable to us for us to understand each other should in case something like that wants to happen and one another in public so you have to find um a signal that's applicable to you and um, i mean good by you, you and your partner for you to always give that sign for you to know that oh actually you are going a bit higher in this kind of thing and i don't uh this or oh, um this kind of talk you're talking about here it's not appropriate uh appropriate for you to be talking about this kind of discussion here right so this signal you are just find one signal if it is like babe like maybe you guys are having conversation and then you just see your husband eyes what kind of sign share something like that just mm-hmm yeah, I think that will also be good instead of correcting your partner in public, right? That will that will really do. Because really, right, um, women we sometimes not not just women, both men and women, sometimes consciously or unaware, right? Unaware or consciously or unconsciously, which is unaware. Um we can just tend to correct one another in public and some people don't find it really good they don't they don't they don't they are not happy when you do that so get to know your partner right yeah 
So the next point is being in contact with your ex. Hmm. Baby girl. <laughs> Be in contact with your ex, right? Um, well, some people don't find it okay for you to have communication or have the contact of your partner. I mean, your ex. You're not supposed to have the contact of your ex. You're not supposed to be in touch with your ex. Well, um, I think this will go... Some people will take this, and I'm sure some people will not. Well, for me, I don't... If... For me, I feel like it also depends on how the relationship ended and um, if you feel like there's still some kind of connection still going on between you and your ex, then I think it's a total no. And But I also feel like even if you're not going to be in touch with your, with your ex, I feel like you're not supposed to keep enemies, right? So you can, if he calls or you call, it's just basically to greet, nothing more. It should not, and it should not be something very often. Like once in a while, probably maybe you guys are even living in the same city, and then you bump into each other. You're not supposed to because um of your past, and then you'll not greet the person or you'll not um you get the person as somebody, right? Um, so basically, I feel like for me, right, I don't see anything wrong with you talking with your ex. Right, but it should be in a minimal form, not for you to be calling the person all the time, right? And it also depends if you still have feelings for that person. If you still have it, then it's a no no. And sometimes, because um, sometimes unaware, as in unconsciously, sometimes when you are communicating with your ex, like keeping in touch with your ex, some old flames will start burning up, like you you start having back, as in getting back the feelings that you once had for your ex. So, it's totally a a no no for some people. So, whatever works for you is fine. So, just speak whatever works for you and then apply it in your relationship or your marriage. Okay. Um. So our next one is turning off TV, mobile devices to spend quality time with your spouse. So for me, right, <laughs> there was a day we went to visit my mom. Then just we went to visit my mom, right? And um when we were talking, we we're just as in we just sat down and everybody were with their phone and they're operating their phone. A man and said, Ah, this one that we are all carrying our phone on type as in operating our phone. Are you sure we do we used to communicate at all? As in do we used to talk at all? Because it seems like our phones are much as in, we like operating our phone more than communicating with ourselves because of the way we are so engrossed with our phones. But um, that's to tell you that there is sometimes our phones usually take the place of us having quality time with our partners. So I think this is a very good one, right? I think it's. I think everybody should apply this in their relationship mostly if you know that you spend so much time at work and then the only time that you have is for you to come and relax with your partner at home and your family and then you now carry your phone and be operating when you're supposed to be interacting or resting and relaxing with your partner it's really a big deal for me right sometimes like sometimes i think i i, I once mentioned this to my husband right i was like i think it what do you think i was like asking him a question when we were still courting we we're still preparing to get married i was like do you think we should have a, a time that we're not supposed to be using our, as in operating our phones for us to have an alone time and he said he said because he's in a medical field and sometimes he cannot like keep his phone aside totally so that will also apply in the kind of job that your partner is into right so but at least once in a while you guys should have a time that you're not supposed to be operating your phone like having some time alone especially if you have been busy from work and then this is the only time that you're supposed to have quality time with your partner please do it keep your phone aside and relax with your partner interact with one another build um yourselves up like so that your your home your marriage will not be boring or will not be filled with some quietness like that. Everybody is just sitting on his own individually. Eh? Please. Okay. So, yeah. Then the next one is make decision with one another first. Yeah. So, 
um this also applies to marriages or relationships not relationships is kind of tricky but in marriage yes you're supposed to um um meet with each other to make a decision as in to um take make decisions with your partner before you do something but like in my this is my early years of marriage right and i'm actually learning from this even though i'm also uh, i'm also talking to you guys i'm also learning from what i'm actually telling you guys right so yeah um i think that you we all need to we all need to always have conversations um talks with our partners let's say you have an event coming up right and or let's say your friend is getting married let me use this typical example that actually happened to me as well and i did it like okay right um so my friend is about to get married and i thought it actually happened in two occasions right and i felt like i felt as if i can make decision for myself feeling as if i was still single not knowing <laughs> I was I was I was acting as if I was still single but and not knowing that the reason why you guys are together is for you to talk and if it's okay by your partner like you get it right you're not supposed to take decision you're not alone any longer you're not the only one in that um you're not you're not alone anymore you are now married so married has responsibilities and you are now with somebody so you have to interact with the person you are guide you guys are now one to in order to know if the person is okay with it before you take the decision of you doing something you get it so basically i wanted to travel for the wedding um the wedding is actually coming up but i um i and i i, I said i was going to go for the wedding but my husband was like you can't go for the wedding i was like why not like <laughs> i was so upset i was like but it's my friend and i want to go for the wedding but i now realize that um i'm no longer in, alone anymore and i can't take decisions um by myself anymore um my husband is my head like the head of the family he's my king right and he we, i'm supposed to relate things with him and if it's okay by him for me to go because um so like looking at the security issues and stuff like that if it's okay for him for me to go then fine but if it is not i can't just go like that without take, taking perm- not it's not like taking permission but like um having having the decision together like for each other because it's same with me if i don't want my husband to actually travel for a wedding i'm just using wedding as an example it can be anything if i don't want my husband to travel for a wedding i can actually say i don't want to i don't want you to go and that is it because i mean we are into that relationship we are two in that relationship so we are to make the decisions together and um if he wants to take a decision maybe an important decision he needs to ask me or talk to me if what as in like for me to give my own opinion about that thing before he decides to go ahead even if he had already decided about it but he has to let me know including um um family issues like that same thing let's say um uh he wants to um give somebody money in the family either from my family or his family he has to talk to me first like how much was my opinion about this thing he wants to do this or he wants to buy a piece of land things like that so you have to um you have, you have to take decisions from each other not it's not one person that will take decision alone okay all right so um the next one is once they get into an argument they need to fix it right away i think i've mentioned that um in the first um points that i mentioned so i don't think it is necessary for me to mention as in give more details on that again okay so I'll move to the next one don't hang up the call uh don't have don't don't hang up the phone on each other no matter how upset one is so i think most of us are most of us are guilty of this thing like when mostly in relationships when you're talking to your partner in a relationship like maybe you you guys um one person offends the other person or there's a disagreement there's a disagreement between the two people right 
and you want to talk to your partner on phone and you call your partner and your partner picks the call he's upset or she's upset and then because of one word that you said from your mouth you tend to just like get more even upset and then cut the call like so we will do it and i think i actually did that i've done that actually on several bases i think i've done that so like you i feel like cutting the call is just for me to annoy him for him to know that i'm actually get i'm i'm actually upset with what he said right so that's the only way a lady or a man can show that somebody is angry with the statement that somebody has made but i don't some people feel like um it's a no-no for them like even if you're angry you don't know what the person wants to say to you you don't know if it's an important emergency or an emergency came up and he wants to relate that thing to you and then you just tend to hang up because you're angry so yeah we there are some people that this will work for and and there's some people that it will not actually work for so like for me i don't know maybe i'll I'll try and work on that and see if it will work for me but if it cannot work for you i mean it's, we are we are all learning um we are learning progress we are learning in progress i mean learn in progress is that correct we're learning in progress right so we are to learn as time goes on like on learn we learn and all that so um as time goes on even though you know that you are the type of person that gets angry so easily or you get angry and then when somebody's on phone even not on phone alone even if you are in the same house because you guys are angry with one another and something happens there's actually a video that was even going around right now, so because the person is angry with his partner and you guys are lying on the same bed, you don't want to answer the person at all. You just want to be on your own. So the lady was, um, the, is it the guy or be the lady? Whichever one. One of them was asthmatic and then the, the, the person, the partner was not tapping his other partner. Like, guy, wake up. I'm like, I need um, my inhaler. But because of the anger that was overriding him, he didn't reply. And that was how the lady died. And they woke, he woke up the next morning and he discovered that the lady was actually in need of inhaler. And that was how he, he she died because of his negligence, because of anger. That's how anger can actually, anger, anger can actually kill. So we should be in check of an anger, like try to resolve some issues that need to be resolved before um going to bed or don't allow um your emotions don't allow uh, um disagreement to linger for that long mostly keeping malice with your partner even if you guys are having disagreements i i know that it can be very tempting to keep malice with one another but try as much as you can to figure out ways to resolve that conflict so that it will not linger for more for more than um a week it, as in me saying this week it's because some people can even stay up to a month. So I feel like a week is preferable, but at least even a, a, a day should not go by without you guys having to resolve your conflict or your um, disagreement. Okay, I, I don't want this um, video to be super long, so I'm going to divide this video into two. This is going to be part one and part two. So I'm going to stop here and then you guys should look out for our part two on this um topic okay so if um if you're enjoying this video guys please do well to share this video like subscribe and do all those good stuff that you know how to do best baby girl we are about to clock 100 100 100 subscribers please i beg make go make go make go make go i'm as i'm celebrating right here they say celebrate little beginnings have you so let's celebrate guys we are about to clock 100 so please i beg i beg hey joe let's go to that 100 and that's how we'll be going 200 300 400 500 to 1000 subscribers eh? 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 let's go yeah. Eh? 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 let's go yeah. Eh? Eh?
guys see you in my next video if you have any comments please put it in the comment section and let the conversation continue okay see you guys in my next video love you guys stay tuned for the part two